All right, so this is going to be kind of a complicated video. So if you currently play uh, the Early Access Forge, like the leaked bill of Forge, you're going to know that Fiddler is kind of a bitch. This, when, when Fiddler is running and you want to actually access Forge, it makes the rest of your computer incredibly slow. Some pages might not even load. You can see this that even in Serage's video on one of this, he says, if you have issues connecting to the internet, close Fiddler and run the after command in Administrator. And this, this, is, this is part of the problem, is that with how it's set up with Fiddler, it piggybacks off of the proxy settings in Windows to work. Which is a problem because it makes all your traffic on your computer, at least all your HTTPS traffic, so basically every web page you go to, go through Fiddler which is a performance goddamn nightmare. So, the past couple days, I've been trying to find a solution to not use Fiddler, because Fiddler doesn't allow you to not fuck everything in an easy way. Well, maybe it does. Maybe there is a way to make Fiddler not do this. And if there is, this video is going to be incredibly stupid. Um, and I'm going to look like an idiot. But there is a solution to make Fiddler not ruin your whole computer when using Forge. And do you need two tools? So this, in, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, both of Serage's videos, both how to save maps and continue playing Halo Infinite Forge, and the video before the first one, how to get early access and forge. Um, you need to watch both of them. Uh, it's, it's somewhere here. Uh, how to play Forge early. Both of these videos. You need to watch both of these videos in order and follow, follow his steps. But instead of using Fiddler. Do what I'm doing instead. The files he has and the stuff that he has is the exact same, except for a few special files that I'm using, and it will work without using Fiddler, and the rest of your computer won't die. So the first program is Proxifier. You can download a 31-day free trial um, and use its tools for now, because with, Halo, with the Infinite Forge being delayed by two months when we thought it was going to be like a month away or so, this will at least get you part of the way, or, you know, you could, like, buy it. It's only, like, 30 bucks or whatever, or 40 and you can... I mean, there's other ways of getting it, but I don't, I don't encourage that. But Proxifier, this should get you most of the way through uh, the Forge flight without having to use Fiddler's bullshit. So install, install Proxifier. And then also, the Men in the Middle Proxy, mitmproxy.org, is the Fiddler alternative that we're using. It does almost the exact same thing that Fiddler does, but it's meant for more like developers that are trying to write scripts to like kind of like do this kind of testing. It's it's more it's more complicated and harder to set up for someone who has no clue, which is why it's taken me like six hours to figure this out. So you need to install this, download this, and install it, and. The files for this are going to be put somewhere like local disk, program files, MITM proxy, whatever. Find this place. Now, this is this part, this stack, it's technically the next step. The files can be saved anywhere, but it's nice to exist. It's nice to have everything in this file because it makes it clean. So just put, you'll see what I mean in a second. The, the second thing is, is a script that this GitHub page, there's a script that works a lot that works through this new fiddler alternative this proxy middle middle men in the middle proxy and it allows us to emulate very easily without much effort the autoresponder tab here in fiddler so if you look here there's like the you know the battle right or the the battle rifle the battle underscore rifle underscore one invar which you if you follow the series video you'll see that this is, this is familiar what you're able to do is come into here and do something similar to this and instead of like choosing the rule, because basically the, the top here rule, here rule here is basically like a path and it's checking if any of the requests over here match this and then it's replacing the response with the thing, the, the response under disk. And that's all we're going to be doing here with this. It's the same exact, same exact functionality. And then you, once that's set up, once you have uh, this proxy set up, then you come over here to this other thing, but we'll go step by step. So this link here, you're going to need. But first, you need to install Proxifier. 
So, once Proxifier is installed, you go to you go to proxy servers. Well, technically, you both need you need both of these installed. So, a, a simple way to get this working because you need this to work. Um, you actually need to run it through a command prompt like this. So I'll close this, which you can cancel it by holding Control C. Uh, once this is running, if you wanted to stop it for some reason, or you get like an error. Um, so what you need to do is open a command prompt in this folder here. Now there's a shortcut for this on, I don't know if this works on Windows 10, but if you right click, you can hit open in terminal, terminal, and it will open this folder in the terminal. If not, all you need to do is open like command prompt, like the classic old school one, copy this, type CD and this, and then now you can see that C program files mint proxy bin is here. Now for the rest of this, I'm gonna use the new fancy Windows terminal nonsense just because it's better than the command prompt and it's it it looks it looks better. So from this from this folder, make sure that the the path of your command prompt is in this bin folder of the MITM proxy. And what you need to do first, th these extra files, these extra stuff over here is specifically for the script. But for now, all you need to run is MITM web. And when you hit enter, a web page is going to load. Now, by default, you might not notice anything when, when you load up pages, you might not notice anything here, and that's fine. Technically, if you wanted to have your whole computer go through it just like Fiddler, there's nothing stopping you from going changing the Windows proxy settings to point to this proxy server. So, if we come over here and look at the, this with the campaign pump we just typed the MIT web in. You can see there's a web server listening on 8080, uh, 8081, and then the proxy server is listening on 8080. So what we need to do now is once, now that this proxy server is running, you can see here now it says it's running, there's, it's like a brink, uh, blinking line. You go to Proxifier, you go to Proxy Servers, and you see I've already set this up, but all you need to do is click Add. I'm going to click Edit here, but click Add, and it's going to bring up a menu like this. So what you want to do is set the address to 127.0.0.1, the port 8080, which is the port here. And then you want to change the protocol to HTTPS. That's the important one. If it's not HTTPS, it will not work. There is a check button down here. Oops. Uh, there's a check button down here that you want to run. Check, click this and make sure that it says the proxy is ready to work with Proxifier. If this does not pop up green, there is a problem and make sure that this server over here on the left is correct and that the port is actually 8080 and that you did type 127.0.0.1 correctly and that it's also HTTPS in the setting here. If you're green, we're good to go on to the next step. So we've added the proxy and it, it's working and you can see here it's actually telling us because to test the proxy, proxifier to test actually just loads up Google. So it's working, you can see here. Um, so now we need to add a rule. First, to make sure that Proxifier doesn't do the same thing that Fiddler does and intercepts all your traffic, because by default Proxifier does do this, you need to go to Advanced and uncheck Handle Direct Connections. This is an important one because if you don't, the direct connections that you don't want to go through the or go through Proxifier will pop up here. Like right now you only see edge because that's have I have a rule for edge. So make sure that handle direct connections is unchecked. That means that only proxy file or handle rules that are def the, the only handle like programs that are defined in the next step here. So proxy file rules. So you're going to see here I'll slow down a little bit. So go to profile now. Proxify uh, proxification rules. Now here, you need to add, in my example, because you're probably watching this video on Chrome, you want to add Edge instead, because the chances of you having Edge open instead of Chrome are probably quite high, or if you're using Edge, use another browser to do this, or you'll have to, you'll have to restart your browser for this to work, is why we're, I'm telling you to use another program. So what you need to do now is click Add, which I've already did this, so I'm going to click edit instead. So click add, and then you get a menu like this. The name up here doesn't matter. This is just for organizations, organization. 
you want to add the Edge browser so you can easily find Edge. So if in the in your search bar, you type Microsoft Edge and you right click, you can open the file location. It might be a little different on Windows 10. It's you can right click and eventually get to the program files, uh, the program in the install directory of Edge by just, you know, still going down, right click, open file location like that. And then this MSE.edge. Add this. So what I'm going to do is copy the path up here and I'm going to go over here and add applications. And then obviously, since I'm already here, you would paste this here and enter and come to this directory and add the MS, MS Edge to the, this rule. Target hosts any, target ports any, just the application needs to be MS Edge or whatever browser that you want to do. This could be a browser you're using right now, but obviously it's hard to watch this video and do this at the same time by restarting the, the browser. But what you need to do now is set at the bottom here, since we've already set up the proxy rule, at the action down here, choose proxy HTTPS 172.0.0.1. This is the proxy we just set up in the previous step. So make sure that's selected and hit OK. Now do the same thing to your Halo Infinite install. So go add, which I'm going to go and edit my current rule, and find where your Halo EXE Insider build folder is at. You know, so in me, it's on my C Halo Infinite Insider. And then down here, there's the Halo Infinite.exe. Now, again, obviously you want to make sure it's the Halo Insider because that's the only one that will work. If you're watching this video and haven't already set this up, I don't even know what you're doing. Um, you should, you know. I, so add in this exe as well, which you can see I've done. If I browse, I'm point and I go to the Halo Insider and add this exe, which is the Insider, uh, the Insider exe. Which here it added two, but I'm not gonna have the two. And it's any host, any target, and then obviously make sure the proxy is set to the one here. It says proxy HTTPS 172.0.0.1, and hit OK. So what this means is now with this setup, it's probably a good idea to come down here to the system tray. Now you want to come to the system tray to restart Proxifier. You need to restart Proxifier after changing these settings because some things don't in Proxifier don't actually update until the whole program restarts. So right now, restart Proxifier, which you need to come down here into the tool, right click Proxifier and hit exit. And it's going to like, eh, whatever exit, if you wait, yeah, hit, hit yes. It doesn't fucking matter. So then open Proxifier again, which it opens to the system tray. So right now, if you come over here and right click the system tray and hit open Proxifier, everything's going to look blank. And it should look bl blank until you open one of these two the, one of these two executables. So when you open Edge or you open Halo Infinite. So now what you want to do is open Infinite or the browser you chose and go to this page, this MITM.IT, and it should bring up a page that looks like this saying, get the certificate. If it doesn't, it will say, you can see this traffic. Uh, if you can see this, this traffic is not passing through the MN in the middle proxy. If you see this, you haven't set it up right. The, the reason that's the reason why I told us to use Edge so that we don't have to have Chrome go through the proxy and you don't have to restart Chrome to make the make to make it use the Proxifier settings. So if you don't if you don't see this page, re-add the executable, restart your browser entirely, like go and make sure it's completely closed by checking task manager and everything and then starting it back up and then go to this page. Also, if you don't see it, make sure that the proxy um, make sure the proxy, this window is still open and running. And if it's not, type in MIT web and make sure that this is actually running. And then go to this page and you should see, get the certificate, whatever. And what you want to do is, since we're on Windows, click the get Windows certificate and then open it. And basically what you do from this point on is just hit next, 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 next. You can just keep that empty next, automatically next, just, just all the way next to finish. I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already done it. And then now we're ready for actually replacing Fiddler. A little bit more setup, a little bit more pain in the ass, but it's beautiful. So I'm gonna close, close all this. What we need to do now is download the MIT proxy mock. This will allow us to emulate the Fiddler settings. So for now we can also close, this is the, the web proxy, the MIT web proxy. Um, uh, the web MIT web like command prompt that we had open so you can just hit control C to cancel this and what we're going to do is we're going to download this zip 
and we're going to take this zip and we're going to come into the, we're going to open it and you're going to see there's a bunch of stuff here. The only thing that we care about is this moxie.py file. Now, you do need Python installed. Um, I'm not sure which specific version of Python you need, but if you have issues that are unexplainable, try a different version of Python. Um, I think, I wonder, let's go see what version of Python I have. Python dash V, or is it dot dash version? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what version of Python I have. Uh, I thought, I thought it was Python dot V. There we go. I have Python 3.8.2 installed on my machine. And that's what this is using. So if you have issues that are unexplainable, install Python 3.8.2 by just Googling Python 3.8.2 and installing it for Windows. Okay, so now that we're past this, take this, take this python.py file, python.py file, this Python file, moxie, sorry, this moxie.py file, this Python file called moxie, and drag it to the file that we mentioned earlier, which is the the men in the middle proxy that we're using for this. So it'd be C program files, men in the middle bin. It d technically doesn't have to be here. It's just for convenience. So drag this file over here, you know, into like this, just drag it over right now. You can see mine's already here and it's sitting next to the MIT mweb.exe or the proxy. You, you can see it's, it's, it's next to the executables, which is what we want. So now what we do is in in the terminal where we can actually, where we typed MIT web, we're gonna add a couple more things to this. Well, technically you need, you need to go download, you need to go download the file that I'm gonna upload to a page. I'll, so there's this file that you need, which this is how you configure your fiddler settings. So some of this, some of this is not relevant for the Serasia method of getting things to work. So there's a few extra things here that I have that Serasia doesn't have. So I'm gonna upload two versions of this for the people that are using the special sauce files and people that are using the Serasia files. So make sure if you do, if none of this makes any sense, just download the normal one. If you have the special sauce files, you know you have the special sauce files. So, next, download this, and also take this, this config.json file and also place it inside of the MIT proxy bin folder. As you can see up here, if I go and, if I look for it, config.json, you can see mine's here, this config.json, and the moxie, the, the moxie.py is also here, so that's, that's all you need. And as long as this, as long as you, now once that's downloaded, once you have them both here, you do need to do some manual editing. So what you need to do is open, um, you need to open this config.json in an editor. It doesn't have to be Visual Studio Code. It could just be Notepad or it can be any other editor. Um, and it also, it might be a good idea to edit it outside this bin if you get like a, uh, an admin like, like uh, issue like to where you don't have permission to edit or save the file. But what you need to do now is like in the Serasia Fiddler file video or the, the Fiddler's files here where he told you to point like say the HI slash projects to the specific file here. You can see on his screen that he, he, he points it to specific files. You need to do the same thing. So in my case, up here it says we see the features flag slash high. I have mine stored over in this folder in my documents. So here's all my like Halo files. So you can see here that it's actually pointing to the same place. See users, Derek, documents related to Halo Forge. And you can see it matches here, feature flags.xbond. So you can see this is where you, this is where you actually point them to. So find the, find the folder, come in and paste it with the file name and .xbond. The dot is important because it won't find anything if you don't. So now 
that you've went through all the rules that are important. There's some rules in here that aren't important that you're not going to have, but you need to make sure you change the path to point to the correct files. If you don't, this will not work. So then save this. Make sure this is so once you, once you save this and that these rules are also all the um all the paths are set up for the for the respective um like uh, rule here so high slash manifest make sure it's the manifest double check make sure projects is projects and the map is the te the test.mvar and so on and so forth so next you go back to the terminal that we've been in this entire time and instead of typing just mitm web Type in MIT web space uh, dash s space moxie.py, which is the name of which is the name of the name of the, the script that we downloaded that helps us do this dash dash set set mock equal config.json, which is the name of the file that we saved here. I'll put all the, all of this will be in the description. So then once you run this, another web browser will pop up. And then I'm going to minimize this. Now I'm not going to, I'm going to keep this on another screen and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. So to, to know if this is working, it should say web server is listening here or the proxy server, the proxy server is listening at the port there that it looked like it was earlier. So now what we do is make with, with Proxifier open and the rules correctly set, these rules are in here are important. And obviously the advanced handle direct connections unchecked. If we go start our Halo Infinite Insider build, by just running the executable, you're going to notice that this this window here is actually going to pop up stuff. And same over here, these you're going to see stuff in both of these windows when Halo starts opening. And this view is exactly like how Fiddler does, like on the left side of the Fiddler view, like over here on the Stranger video. Here's like the where you see all the different HTTP requests, and it's all like a big blob of mess. This is the same view. We're looking at essentially the same view. So now you just hit enter, load into the game like you would normally. And if you did everything correctly, it should work. So you go to custom game and you access Forge the normal way. Now to prove that this isn't a fluke, I'm going to control C, close this. The proxy is no longer running. And if you try to run infinite without a proxy running, you won't be able to access Forge. So you need to make sure that this proxy terminal here is actually running before you try to start this and everything's set up correctly because you will load into the main menu sometimes without the proxy running but it's it takes it's a lot slower like it's here it's stuck on getting profile from platform and it's not really working at all this might take like 10 minutes to actually load into the main menu or whatever it takes a while so if i turn the proxy back on and we send it and we double click on this you're going to notice that it's going to load instantly. Well, in my case, most it might not be instantly, but it should be relatively quickly. Nothing should take more than 10 or 15 seconds to load. So authenticating with servers, blah, 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 blah. And then we go to custom games and we're in and we can forge like we normally would. Beautiful. Now, to prove the map's working, we're going to go load up the map currently, which is BR1. Oh, no, hold on. We got to make sure we set it to local offline, hit play. And then you're going to notice the map load up as well, unless I typed it wrong, which I might have typed it wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure what map this is. I think it was like, it, maybe it's the Among Us remake map. No, it's, it's this map that I was doing on the last stream. So it, it did load up a map, you see, and it's working just like Fiddler. So I'm going to close Halo but it, now, but with this, you should be good. Everything should be working. The benefits of this is that Proxifier doesn't intercept every single connection. If I open a YouTube ch page here and I refresh this on both, so if I close this and reopen this so that we can kind of see the, you know, a new, um, uh, a new, uh, like screen here that isn't cluttered. If we look at Proxifier and the proxy here and I hit the refresh button here on YouTube, you notice neither of these show any, show anything because it's completely bypassing the Windows proxy and only, only the executables that you set here in the proxification rules go through the proxy or go through, you know, the, ser the, the server we set up over here. 
So hopefully with this, you can figure out, hopefully with this, that you can bear foraging while we wait two, in, two months for Forge to come out for real because they fucking delayed it or whatever. But hopefully this wasn't just an incoherent mess of rambling. Um, Discord. Discord, there is, there is a Discord. This is, I'll put an invite link in the description. If you have any problems with this, um, come in here and ask questions. I'll eventually get around to it or someone else will. It's, everyone's amazing here, okay? Discord. Um, if you have somehow got to this part of the video and you don't have access to Forge and you come in and, you know, haven't followed the Sereja video first, follow the Sereja video first and then come ask for help. Very important to watch that first. Um, yeah, that should be it. Everything should be beautiful.